Welcome to ME160 Engineering Drawing Part 6 Development 6.3 6.6.3 Radial Line Method Application Introduction on Radial Line Method Radial Line involves introduction of radial lines on the surfaces of solid such as a prism or and cones. The apex is taken as the center of radiation and the slanting line edges or generatrices, generatrix act as radials for the development. Example, Y, right truncated cone. Here, given we have a truncated cone, right, where we have a truncated cone, here the front view we have true, there are no true lengths of the radial lines here except the end sides, the extreme sides. Edge view of the upper and the lower are provided, and from the top view, we have here the true shape of the lower section. The true shape of the lower section is provided, but not here because of the shape of the upper section, nothing has been provided, but it can be deduced during the construction. No true shape of upper section is given. No True lengths of all sides are not given, so these are required for the development. Steps determine the apex of the cone. Draw your vertical lines over here along the radial to meet to give us A. Then correspondingly, you can determine A on the, on the top view. Introduce radial lines on surfaces by dividing base, that is the top view into even and equal divisions. So here, now the higher the number of divisions, the more accurate it is. I think we know this because the, if, that, if the number of divisions is high, then the chord length can be approximated to the, to the arc length. If the divisions are low, then that assumption does not hold. Now labeling 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, right? And corresponding points, we have to obtain the corresponding radials on the front by projecting, right? To note here, the visible paths are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, mm -hmm. sorry, 7 are visible. Then the rest are not visible. That's 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 are within. They are invisible. They will not be visible. Now, for the radial lines, we must, we must radiate the lines to the point to a, the apex. So now join the lines to the apex over there, and there we have our radial lines. So now, correspondingly, we have to obtain the radial points on the upper section over here, this portion. We have to obtain our points over there. So here, A, B. Note here, that's the visible portions first, right on line one, one, that's A. Then here, that's two, B will correspond. Then three, C will correspond. Three, C, four, D, E, F. Then over here, H, I, J, K, L. They are not visible. Mm. They are not visible. So we now go on. Then we need to obtain the corresponding points of that on the upper section on the top view. That is to obtain the opening view over here. So what we do, we project, taking G, we project it down to the line seven, right? <clears throat> because seven and G are connected, so G will be located here. Then again, when you project this point from here, that is H and F, they are connected to six and eight. So here we have F and then H. Likewise, here you have E and I. Then over here you have D and J. Then here you have C and K. Then here you have B and then L. Then here you have A. Now, going with the French curve, and that is the shape of the upper opening. But note that is not the true shape. Mm. Now obtain, now we want the lengths, we want to determine the lengths of the respective lines, and we can know which edge to open, to cut open. Now logically, 
if we take this point here, then that will be here. That means one and seven are the same distance they have. So here in terms of this, seven G is now here as one G. Mm -hmm. So that is a true length of that edge. Likewise, we can project this to obtain the corresponding lengths also over here, likewise over there, likewise over here, likewise there, likewise there. So what we can look at is that the point G, yeah, right, is on G A, right? So we've now transferred it here, right? So now G A, G A, so that we know that now 7 G, 7 G will be the edge, right? So if you look at it, how do we get it? It's A7 minus A G, which will give us G7, right? So from here, when we map on, we can see for all the points over here, the shortest is 7 G. So the shortest of the edge is the line is 7 G. So we are going to cut open over there, right? When we cut open there, then we open it up. It's a fan shape. So when we open it up, then that means the fan can go from 8, from 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, outward, right? So now we go in to stretch it out, and that will be 7, right, over there. Then we note over here. And the distance between them now, we these are not equal distances, but we know between any of these, the division is equal. So between the points on the base, they are equal. So that is equal to the quarter length. So here we have the quarter length over here, and that is the point 8. So now the point 8 will be over there. So to get 8A is just to draw the line which has been drawn. Then the next one is 9, the line has been drawn then here they are equal. So therefore, for that radiating up to A, they are equal. So we have equal distances. Now we come to the point of looking for G, where G will be. So here, that is G taking the radius from here and then subscribing over here. This will now locate G for us. Then we take F, okay, G here and G over the note here because it's seven, that's seven. So it has two points over there. Then we go to F. When we come to F, note here is F and H. And F goes to, F is on 6, right? As well as, oh, sorry. That is H. H is on 8, sorry. H is on 8. And then we have F on 6. So we go to F on 6, right? Then we go to the next line. For the next line, we have E and I. E and I, E on the 5, and then I on the 9. So I on the 9, and then E on the 5. Then we go to the next point over here, J and D. J, J on the 10, and then D on the 4. Then we go on. So by that method, we are able to locate the respective points as we want. Having located these points now, we now have to fulfill the edges, right? So that is one edge, 7G, and then the smooth curve that goes through the other point before the final extreme point of 7G comes in. So you have this. So that is the shape of the, 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 shape of the cone, the truncated cone. What we haven't yet found out is the true shape of this upper edge or section. So here, up, so we project perpendicular to it and project that is going to be an ellipse. So we have an ellipse over there as our view. Let's take the case of an oblique truncated cone. So in that respect here, once again, looking at the front view here, we don't have true lengths, right? So except the stream, once again, that are true. Then the edge views of the lower section is given and the edge view of the upper section is given. Then we go to the top view. For the top view, we have the true shape of the lower section, which is given. No true lengths in any of this. So if no true shape of the upper section is given. No true lengths are, of the lines are given. 
So step one, now determine the apex, draw the lines along the string ends to give us A and locate likewise A over here. Then introduce radial line surfaces by dividing the base into even and equal divisions. So we come here, produce an equal division. Well, we know it must be a high number of division. And then we label the points 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Right. Then we produce those radial lines now by projecting these points onto the front view. So here 1 there, then 2 and 12. 2 will be visible, 2, 12 will be within. Then 3 and 11, 3 will be visible, 11 will be within. Then 4 will be visible, 10 will be within. Then likewise 5 and 9. 5, 9 within, then we have 6 and 8, that is within, then we have 7 at the stream. Then draw our radial lines to the point A, so we have our radial lines drawn, so the radial lines have been achieved. Now we have to find the corresponding points on the upper section, upper edge view, right, or the upper opening. So here we go once again, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, as we did, right? So that is it. And we have to find the corresponding points over here as well, just as we did. Taking the G point, right? And then we, sort, we bring it down to the 7, right? A7. Then we plot that. Then we take the H, F line. And that goes to, note here, it will go on to the line that is point eight and six, right? Eight and six. Then the next one goes on to five and nine. Mm -hmm. Then we get the respective points there. Then the next one goes on to four and that. So we get these points over there gradually. Mm -hmm. Note where the points go. Carefully follow them, right? And you have it over here. Note the last point A is actually beneath, it's not visible, it's going to be beneath. Note the other as you go. Then now we draw it with a smooth curve and we have what we see over here. Thank you. Now determine the true lengths, right? Since we don't have true lengths, we have to determine the true lengths. Note here these are radial lines and we can use the rabattement method to determine. So we use here here that we take the respective lengths and rotate them. So what we do, we first of all take our point A cap from the capital A point and look at the respective lines, rotate them to the horizontal, project them to their corresponding point. So if I take the line 7A and rotate it to this side to the horizontal, then I must look at the height of level of 7 over here, right? project and then look at the height level of 7 and comes to me there to get my point 7. Then I take, draw that and that will be the true length of A7. Now I can go to the next point that is 6 as well as corresponding to 8, right? So I rotate it over here, then project to the horizontal. Note they all have a common horizontal point that is 6 and 8 over here. Then I can join them so the two of them have the same lengths. Then I go for the next one, 5 and 9, come over here and I obtain the true length of A, 5 and 9. Then I go in for the next one, that is 4 and 10, then I get 4 and 10 true lengths. Then I go in for 3 and 11, 3 and 11, then go through and I get 3, 11, then I go in for 2, and 12, then I get 2 and 12, then I go in for the next point here, the next point here, 2, I have to go in for 1, right, it's left with 1, and I come for only 1 and get 1, 12. Now these are the radial lines, but not the edges as correspond, I need to find the corresponding points at the upper section over here just as we did the other situation. So I can now look at it from that angle, take G and map it onto G. So you have G over there, that is A7 and G is over here, so that is it. Then I have the other points over here, that will come here, that will also come here, that will come there, that will come there, that will come there, 
that will come there till I get all the points over here. So here, here the shortest length, as you can see, is 1a. Approximately, this you may look at it, it looks but this is longer than that. Mm -hmm. So the shortest is this 1a. So we are going to cut open along 1a, right? That is over here, and open it up, right? If we cut at 1a and we have to open it up, not the other in which we are going to open, we can spread it this way, right? We cut here. Note how this is. This is a little bit uh, because it's the other direction. So we can open it up in. Let's see. So now we go in to do this. We come in here. That is 1A. Then now we step up over here as 1. Then we look for A. Right. Okay. Sorry. Then we go for 2. Mm -hmm. Then we project line 2. Then we go for here. Then we know the distance between 1 and 2. Mm -hmm. This is the same distance here, one and two. Look at it, is the arc radius, which is the same thing. So that arc radius is given over here to give you here. Then from here, you have one, two, then you go to three. Then the, again, you use that arc radius distance from point two to point three, and you get point three. Then you draw your line through it. Then the next one, four, your center here, radius to strike here to give you point four. And then draw your line through it, center here, radius to give you that, and strike that, that will give you here. Then center there, radius to strike the other one will give you this. The center likewise, radius will give you this. Then you come here, the next one, center here, the radius will give you this point. Likewise, you get this point. Likewise, you get here. So you get the rest of the points over there as it is. So now all the points have been given from one here up to one. So that is the case. Now we have to get the corresponding points curves over here. So here, sorry, I forgot about one. Then seven, that's J over here. J is on seven nodes. So you take G over here, sorry, and run it to seven. Then you take the next one, that is F. We actually have F and H. Hmm? F is coming on to, F is coming on to six and H is coming on to 8. So F onto 6 and H onto 8. Likewise, the other points over here. Then from H, you go to the next point that is over here, that is uh, I and E. E goes to E goes to 4 and I onto 9. So E onto E goes to, sorry, E is to 5. Mm -hmm. and I on to 9. So keep on that way. You get the points here, there, carefully so that you locate the, risk, the right points over there. This, over here, and then over there. Now we have all our points. You need our edge. That's a smooth curve over there. A smooth curve. This is a straight line. Then over there, straight line. Then a smooth curve over here. So we have our pattern given over here. Yes, and now we go in for the upper section over here, which means we perform an auxiliary projection perpendicular to that, right? And that should give us um, our ellipse again. So thank you. End of 6.3.